can have that. Yeah, you can have that. Thank you, can have that. Yeah, thank you, can have that. thank it's, you so much for having me. Well, it's a great pleasure, and thank you for being here. Let's talk about uh, your interest uh, in sports. Okay. Uh, now, there was a time in this country, perhaps before you were born, that very few women uh, reported on sports. Right. And, and now, thankfully, all of that has changed. How did it change for you early in your life? First born in a family of two girls, and even the Golden Retrievers are girls as well. So my poor dad, who's a ginormous sports fan, mm -hmm. from Springfield, Massachusetts, and uh, I was trying very hard to convince my dad I was a boy, even though he was in the birthing room and, and everything. <laughs> the jig was up, right? And uh, he just sat me down and said, these are the Celtics. These are the Red Sox. They will break your heart. And uh, <laughs> this is Larry Bird, and he is a god. First crush ever was Kevin McHale, uh -huh. number 32 in my heart. And um, I, I was talking to my dad about it today. He said, I just wanted to know the stories. I wanted to know about French Lick, Indiana. I wanted to know about him eating sweet potato pie with magic. And then that's how it was for me, just learning the stories. And then I went to school for it at the University of Florida, and it kind of just blew up really fast. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it was going to happen, uh, being that close to Boston, it was absolutely going to happen. Right, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, and I was in Maine um, when I grew up with, you know, we were there for five years, and then we moved to Florida. And, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy how now it's all turned around, and, you know, I've done the World Series. Red Sox obviously won this past year. How'd you feel about that? <laughs> How'd you feel about it? It was uh, less interesting for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's talk about something else okay. uh, more recent. The, the Super Bowl and uh, the Peyton Manning story, I, I think everybody in America, irrespective of the Seahawks fans, kind of had a crush on Peyton Manning, making the yeah. comeback, getting to the Super Bowl, winning it, and retiring. Right. Didn't happen. What was it like there? You covered the game. Well, so um, two sideline reporters, Pam Oliver was the other, and she chose to do Seattle, and, and I got Denver. And I was, I mean, how could you not be excited? This was the matchup we wanted, and you're right. We fell in love with him and the matchup. And, everything he had been through with the neck surgeries and um, you know we had met with him a couple days before obviously the Super Bowl and just said is this going to be it you know if you win this is this going to be it and he had looked us dead in the eye and said it's not I mean it's absolutely not it's really the first time since he had been in Denver he started having fun again um, you know when he first got there he was getting acclimated to the team trying to learn the offense learn all about his players and he was having fun this year he's going golfing with the guys going out uh, feeling like the old days with Indianapolis. Well, so I believe he wasn't retiring. His, his first year there also, everyone yeah. was worried about the neck. Right. But, but then, uh, during the game, you're right there uh, with, with the team, behind the guy. Yeah. And, and the first possession for the uh, uh, Broncos, it's like something I would do. <laughs> Me too, though. What, what, what was his reaction? What was the feeling there on the sideline after that? Well, you saw the build-up in the national anthem and the flyover, and it's like, here we go. I'm crying. The players are coming out for intros. And then it's just snapped over his head. And it's like, I literally hit my sideline producer and said, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Like, I cannot believe this just happened. So they come back over, obviously, on the sideline. And he goes right for the offensive line. So I'm like the spy. I listen in. I want to hear what he says. Very calm. Just said, hey, get it together. Were you there? Did you go? Mm -mm. It was very interesting because doing a couple games in Seattle, it was so loud. It was like a college atmosphere. And we were worried that the Super Bowl, because it's so corporate, it wasn't going to be loud. Dave, they were in the end zone right where all the Seattle fans were. So loud, so nuts. And uh, I think that had a little bit to do with it. But he didn't move. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd come over from three and out, interception, interception, sit on the sideline, look at the formation, look at the printouts, talk to the wide receivers. He didn't have much, you know, facial expressions. He didn't need to because he was ticked off and he was trying to figure out a way to adjust. Fox was, you know, the producers in my ear are like, is he doing anything? Is he doing anything? No, he's just sitting looking at the formations trying to figure it out. But it was uh, quite telling at the time. It seemed like it might be telling, but the sort of thing you'd laugh about after the game. But in fact, it, it told the whole story there, that blown snap. It did. The whole thing. And how about halftime coming back? Did you think they had a chance? Yeah, I, I thought, thought they were going to score. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll be right back here with Aaron Andrews, everybody. <laughs> Amazing. I've been Claire Sinclair for six days. Are you tired of uh, talking about Richard Sherman? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I 
I, I was actually interested to ask you, what did you think of it? Uh, well, I, I loved it. And, and uh, you know, it's interesting. Here's what I loved most about it. Uh, of course, unusual behavior is always going to get everybody's yeah. attention. But this is big time, big, big time sports. You, you should expect that. It shouldn't have been a surprise that right. a guy just saves the game for his team and is full of adrenaline and then worked up, and then they, the two guys had that exchange. So you, nobody should be a surprise. Here's what I love. Uh, <laughs> he was now being uh, uh, chastised for his outrageous behavior. I know. Well, not that outrageous. No. But he was being chastised for his outrageous behavior. He comes to New York for the Super Bowl. He's a perfect gentleman. Now he's being chastised for that. I know, right? Uh, what, what, what do you want? Seriously. Think about in the play he made. I mean, he saved the game. He sends him to the Super Bowl. How many times would you love a guest to absolutely lose their mind and be candid sure, like that? Enough. Let's have a little of that. What would you have asked? And, and, uh, uh, would you have he, asked anything different? No, no. No, but I mean, if you look at the play, so many of those plays are going to be interference. Yeah. And that one wasn't. And that saved the game. And, and, and then what did he say to Crabtree? He goes over and says... Uh, uh, Heck of a game, heck of a game, yeah. and then got the hand in the face. Yeah, yeah. I said to Peyton, um, you know, when we met with him before the Super Bowl, I said, hey, now you know, if I get you at the end of this game and you win it, I want you to look at the camera and say, I'm the best quarterback ever! Don't you ever question my legacy! And he looked at me and he goes, because you know I won't do that. And I was like, you're right, I know, but I love you too, Peyton. I'm a bummer. Uh, and then Dancing with the Stars, oh my God, did you know about that? I heard about it. I heard a little mm -hmm. something. You're going to be co-hosting. Well, and actually, there was a rumor that Richard Sherman was going to do it, and then he got injured in the Super Bowl. How epic would that have been? Have the 12th man there with the towels and all that? But then, uh, do you dance? No, I did a couple years ago. Four yeah. years ago, I was on the you show. Got, you got to broke your leg or something? No, I no. I wish I could have said that's why I was so bad. Um, I did beat Ocho Cinco. That was the highlight for me. <laughs> but I broke my foot, and I ended up losing about 15 pounds. I looked like a 12-year-old boy. I was like a stick figure. It was now, what, what does Dad think of you now dancing with the stars? Um, he's excited. It's kind of like the Michael Strahan thing. You know, he's one of my coworkers on mm -hmm. Fox, and he does entertainment during the day, and then talks football with the boys. So it's the best of both worlds. Protect yourself. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, good luck on your new gig, and we'll see you next time. Uh, we'll see you all year round on Fox. Yeah. It's Aaron Andrews, ladies and gentlemen, from Dancing with the Stars. We'll be right back in a little bit.